Calls for a four-day work week. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your morning Steiner coffee and I thought today I'd do something a little different. I'd record a quick morning episode to discuss, well, this this talk about a four-day work week, everyone. Let me bring up the slide here. Four-day work week trial and year of paid parental leave recommended by a Senate committee. Okay, a four-day work week. Now, it's been a very long time since I've actually been an employee for someone else. I worked all through university, so I was studying a full-time degree and working four days a week. So I have had a four-day work week, guys, back when I was a student and back when I was a much younger man and I could juggle the uni commitments and um, work commitments at the same time. Architecture is a notoriously labor-intensive um, field. It takes a lot of time to do all the drawings, and then you've you got to go a lot of back and forth. It's a very iterative process design. And at university, I, I often had a rule while I was at work. I, I'd finish work at like 5 or 5.30, whenever I, whenever I did, probably more like 6, to be honest. But then I would absolutely 100% finish all my uni work I was doing every night at midnight. Okay, so, and often I would go to uni uh, and I'd work at the computer labs there just to get, have that separation, you know, so you're not stuck at work all the time, which was fantastic. I mean, you got you got an experience in an office and you had university and all the girls you dated were architecture students and <laughs> hence my wife, but still. So I'm really detached from this. I see this, I think, okay, you know, I mentioned it to Rachel this four-day work week and she's going, what? What uh, you know, paid less, and I go, No, 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 no. The idea is they only work four days, but they're more productive because they have another day off and they're paid the same. And she's going, that, That's bullshit, that's like a 20% tax because you know what's going to happen. You're still going to need to work five days, but you'll be paid a premium for working five days. And then you're really, Oh boy, can you imagine the talk about the, the uh, wage gap then when you've got a four day work week and a whole bunch of People working four days and a whole bunch of others working five days earning that extra overtime. And imagine the costs and competitive issues with Australia on a global stage. So to me, this seems like an utterly ludicrous idea. I mean, it all sounds nice, but it shouldn't be coming from the government. It shouldn't be mandated if a business wishes to provide this as an option to give them a strategic advantage in hiring and maybe more productivity or probably the same productivity. Fantastic. Go for it. But once the government mandates it, you know it's going to be every civil servant. You'll be ringing up, there'll be no one there. It'll be a nightmare beyond belief. But maybe I'm just old-fashioned, you know, evolving to my boomer form. So let's check out this article before we look at you know just the Google Trends and what you have said about this question. So the four-day work week trial and a year of paid parental leave recommended by a Senate committee. So, I don't mind the year of paid parental leave. Well, as the father of six, I understand how important it is for a mother to be with the baby at that young age, at the, the first year. Okay, Dad, you're just pretty much, you know, you occasionally change nappies. You're there as the, your wife to yell at when they lose sleep. But it's all about the mother and the baby, and you want to have a year of breastfeeding. That alone will improve the IQ of our country. That may be the one thing that'll save us from <laughs> from a decline in quality of life. But anyway, anyway, let's have a look here. I don't like the idea of the government paying for it, though. Um, how we think about the va and value our work and our caring arrangements needs a major shakeup, according to a new Senate committee report. In the past, we didn't really need the Senate to kind of michel in and get, get involved in our own personal lives. I, I was talking to a friend the other day. <clears throat> who is expecting his second baby, which is really really encouraging and awesome news when people tell you that, although it's very early for him to be sharing it. I think his wife's a bit pissed at him, but, you know, he's excited. Exactly the same as me. I was the same. I never kept a secret. You, <laughs> the danger is uh, YouTubers might learn about when we're expecting next before my own mother. Uh, that, that, that'll, that'll, she'll probably find it on YouTube. That'll get me in trouble. But anyway, why is the Senate getting into personal business. 
I know it, that's what it does. I know our government loves getting into our personal business here, but it's Australia, isn't it? The Committee on Work and Care has been tasked with taking a wide-ranging look at our current system and the impact they have on people who care for loved ones or others at the same time as holding down a job. You know what will happen. People will just get two jobs. You'll, have, you'll be capped at working a certain number of days at one job and then anything more, they'll probably they'll be punitive, extra payments or punishments. So people will get more jobs. In its final report, it made 33 recommendations about ways to improve people's lives and provide more support in a range of areas from multi- multicultural carer services to backing pay rises for other care industries. Here are four of the other ways... Sorry, other changes they suggest. I'll have to go through this report eventually and look at these 33 recommendations. A four-day work week trial. I mean, I bet you there are a lot of you that work four-day work weeks. There's a lot of small business owners that might have structured your life to give you that flexibility, and it's probably fantastic. But that's different to the government mandating it. Can, do you understand the perspective there? You know, maybe you, you've built your life to such a, a way, you've got your career, you've got a job. I'm, and one thing is, you know, um, the speech therapist we have for Edward that, that visits for the NDIS. I mean, that'd be a fantastic job with the flexibility that could provide. You, you know, maybe you've got a career like that. It's a little way down the recommendations list, but the committee thinks the government should give its, oh, its own four-day work week trial ago. Oh, great, for government employees. I guess most of them, you know, are they only there in body and spirit? While there's already a number of private businesses who are or have trialed four-day weeks, the fact that the committee, which is made up of Greens, government and coalition MPs, wants the federal government to try it is pretty steep. Not really. Come on, it's a vote winner. You've got, a, you've got Greens calling for stuff like this. The most detached par- uh, parliamentarians from anyone. Look at all of the insane rubbish that the Greens come up with. Okay, you've got you've got so, uh, we've got a Greens member of Parliament here in Queensland. His experience is working at an Apple shop. Not that there's anything wrong with working at an Apple shop, but you kind of want someone with you know a little bit more maturity and experience about the world, or maybe hey, I'm just evolving to my boomer form. This is the new Australia now. Government uh, anyway. Successfully implementing it across the public service. Oh, come on. Pub- I've actually done a stint in the public service. I worked for the Architectural Practice Academy under the Department of Public Works. We were our own little independent unit to train us up to be architects. And going over to the public works, just because I, t- I, I mentioned I've worked all through my university studies. So I was coming into this postgraduate, or, yeah, postgraduate program with all these years of experience working in private industry going into this government world and it was it was a culture shock it really was a culture shock just the way things were done it was at a different rate a different speed it was crazy it really was anyway i would give quite a bit of weight behind what's so far been done at a small scale the committee suggests the government uses the 180 100 model whereby employees retain 100 percent of their salary yeah, of course while reducing their hours to 80% while maintaining 100% productivity. Okay. Do you think that's even possible? I mean, there's certain jobs, sure, but th- what if you have a deadline? What if you have to, you've got a certain time frame to meet a deliverable and you've got to work? What if there's stuff that actually has to be done? You're not just a paper pusher, you produce things. I wonder how, what about. These public servants, how many of their jobs could be automated by just chat GPT? How many of them just copy and paste scripts and move them around from government bloody intranets anyway? I, I shared a, a tweet the other day. It was one of the uh, presentation from the SVP ba- SVB bank, you know, the one that's, uh, that's gotten into trouble in the States. It was a session on pronouns. And there's this guy there presenting all about these different pronouns. And I I thought, what a type of bullshit job would that be? I mean, come on. You'd have to know that's a crock of shit if you're doing it. You're just milking it for the money because it's easy. You'd have to, wouldn't you? Or maybe he's invested in that. That, What's worse, 
milking it because you know it's an easy job or believing in it. I mean, anyway. It also recommended getting a university on board to measure the impacts of the trial and see what impact it had on people's well-beings and whether it changed the split of unpaid care between men and women. Oh boy, that's the issue here. Here's the thing. There's a difference between men and women. We're, we, you know, there's a biological difference. Particularly in that first year, you want the mother around. Okay? You want the mother around to bond with the child, to breastfeed the child if it's possible. Don't get me wrong, formula has saved a lot of lives. A lot of lives. It's one of the best inventions in the world. But, oh boy. The trial was one of a few recommendations aimed at shaking up the conventional ideas of work. Yeah, from, from, a, from a Senate committee with how many of them actually have had jobs. How many of them have run businesses? It's crazy when you look at like the resume, the CV of some of these politicians. They've just gone out down that career path. And isn't the idea that we have a variety of people across all strata of society getting into parliament to put sensible ideas on the table? The committee also, but of course you want people with a bit of experience. The committee also recommended getting the Fair Work, Fair Work Commission to review the idea of a 38-hour work week and whether stronger penalties are needed for businesses to make their staff work long hours. What? Stronger penalties are needed for businesses to make their staff work long hours. What do you mean? Do you want them to work long hours or not? I, I don't get it. Or is this the, the penalties I'm, I would imagine they'd bring in if people work extra? Another suggestion was for the government to consider adding a, in a law the right to disconnect and stop employers from contact with workers outside of hours except in an emergency. That, that already exists. It's called turning off your phone. That's the right to disconnect. Um, so a year of paid parental leave. When it comes to changing the landscape of, uh, for carers, there were a stack of recommendations by the committee, including to further boost the amount of leave offered to parents. So here's the thing. I mean, fantastic. Parents spending time with their kids, particularly in the formative years. But they're going to steal the money from you anyway in taxes and redistribute it. This week, the government passed its legislation to change the current paid parental leave scheme and plans to increase the weeks on offer to 26 by June 2026. But the report urged the government to go even more ambitious than that, calling for it to fund and implement a pathway to reach international best practice of 52 weeks a year. Now, I remember we were working on a job uh, and Rachel was working with a project manager. She was pregnant at the same time as this PM. The PM was so stressed, they had a, a um, premature birth and then within weeks was back at work. And they weren't getting paid enough to make it worth it. This is a PM in a big, well-known brand. I think they were getting paid 60 grand a year, some, some bullshit fee. And I'm not talking that long ago, guys. That was not impressive even back then. But, you know, it was the brand suckering all the women to work there. And that was really sad because her partners, you know, kind of pushed her to work. And this is why, you know, when women have kids, a lot of them go, to, to hell with this. Let's let's be a bit more flexible. I want to spend time with my family, you know? And it's also when you realize what's more important in life. It also said it should make sure that full period of leave could be used by sole parents and superannuation was paid on all paid parental leave payments too. I mean, this all sounds awesome. But where's the money coming from? Is the government paying it? Are you going to force the employers to pay it? If you force the employers to pay it, that will disincentivize them from hiring people that could potentially become parents either side what it'll do it'll push them to do more contracting less employees or offshoring work this is the, this is the issue when you have with this it's going to be great for all the civil servants but they're kind of separate from the rest of the economy in a way the report also echoed for forthcoming recommendations from a different task force to axe the child care subsidy activity test and reverse the polity that shifts single parents off parenting payments and onto lower job seeker payments when their child turns eight. But that's when the child can go to school, isn't it? And that's when you can get a job. 
or extra hours. Here's the thing. I would argue what's more important is to incentivize marriage and stability and keeping people together or getting married and having a stable environment before you have children. But these are very outdated old concepts now. Just all of human history backs it up. But don't worry, I'm sure, I'm sure we've got it right these days with all the woke bullshit that they're talking about. Look at what welfare has done to single-parent households in the U.S. And how certain demographics have been completely destroyed by that. The, the rate of fatherlessness in homes. It's really sad when you go down, you know, when you ignore all the bullshit that the media says and you actually look at the stats and the numbers and see what's really happening. It's kind of, that's kind of a, a blackpilling moment. Anyway, and on the Parent Next program, it said the government should ditch all compulsory elements and participation requirements. I'm assuming that's a program to, to get monetary support. What I would really love to see is that all the education money that gets spent on children gets attached to the child. So if you go to a certain school, you, you, are, you understand you've got you know, certificates, that's worth $20,000 that go to the school. So the school is encouraged to compete for your education. And if someone homeschools, you get that money and you can use that yourself. Hiring teachers separately from the system. But imagine the unions would hate that. They want to keep their stranglehold on the teachers and you know, keep the system normal. I'm just thinking what I could do with, you know, what have I got? Two kids homeschooled now. I'll have three next year. 40 grand a year on extracurricular tutoring and support, bloody hell, you'd be able to do so much, so much. It just shows you how inefficient the current system is because it's a different world now. You don't need factory schooling. You've got access to the best knowledge in the world. Anyway, that, that's my personal bugbear that will never happen in this generation. Who are we kidding? It might happen in America, but never in Australia <laughs> in a million years. So increased care pay. The committee didn't hold back in its calls for increases to a whole bunch of welfare payments. One of the recommendations was for the government to argue the case for award wage increases for all care sectors, including early childhood education, disability care, aged care, and all sectors uh, covered by the relevant child care and social community home care and disability services industry award. The report also noted that appropriate wages were crucial to retaining staff in care industries. For people who don't work in the industries but provide care to loved ones, the report also recommended a review of the carer's payment and carer's allowance to acknowledging the significant social and economic contributions the carers make. So how likely are these changes? Even though there was no dissenting reports, people saying they disagree with the recommendations by the committee, it doesn't mean these recommendations are a sure thing. In addition... Comments both government and coalition MPs noted that while they supported the recommendations in principle, the economic reality of implementing all of them were pretty much impossible. Okay, good. Good. So let, let's have a look. We can see here over the last five years, just four-day work week is certainly trending up in Australia. Look at this. Look at this. Do we have all? Let's go to 2004 to present. So there you go. Look at, look at that. It was up a little bit. Back in the day, in 2004, when it's just been flat, 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 flat. And now we've suddenly got, look how lazy we've gotten. <laughs> this is the lockdowns. This is because of the lockdowns. People got off the shit rat race treadmill and realized that life could be better. That's what it is. You know, people are making changes. Fantastic. So, But let's have a look to see what you, the viewers of Heiser Says, have to say. So 13 hours I put a vote up or poll up. Should Australia shift to a four-day work week, 1,000 votes, which isn't bad. That's about the size of a, a finder poll where they're writing articles that 40% of the country is in a mortgage crisis and it's all collapsing. Okay, so let's check this out. 59% of you said yes for a four-day work week and 41% said no. There you go. So the majority of Heiser Says viewers and most of you are... Australian, like 90%, and about 87% are male. And most of you are my age or above. So we're all a bunch of, you know, old buggers. Not all of us, but a lot are. So there you go. 59% said yes. So let's have a look. Here we go. Let's, let's see. I said yes, and I'll keep doing seven days. Yeah. How many of you did that? 
Okay, how many of you said, yeah, sure, 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 because you know it'll all the lazy bastards will be doing four days and you'll just pick up extra hours. How many of you said that? <laughs> I should I should do it as another poll question. Here we go. Try doing that in a small business where customers expect you to be open at least six days. There you go. Oh, and that means you need to hire more people, Sky. You need to get more staff. And that's the thing. That's It's a pain in the ass the more people you have. Because you're rebriefing. Oh, it's, it's terrible. The shift will just mean working longer hours over four days. Or jobs will get reduced as companies can't afford to put on more people. Yeah, every other person is additional costs and a pain in the ass. I don't know how it works for casuals or part-timers. Why not? Ha ha. Then we'll really be competitive. Yeah. Can you imagine that on the world stage? And they, they want to bring manufacturing back to Australia, a four-day week manufacturing. Israel should not be sneakily... What are you talking about, mate? Different topic. Um, if Australia wants to exacerbate its uncompetitive status against the world's developed and emerging economies and transition quicker to a lower standard of living, then go right ahead. Make it a three-day week. Yep, yeah, you got to like there for that one. I mean, that, that would be... Uh, yeah, that I think, sums it up very well. You may as well ask, who wants free beer and pizza? Well, who wants free beer and pizza? I haven't had breakfast yet. That oh, Beer for breakfast this is, yeah. This is just coffee, guys. Straight black coffee. So, I do four times 10 hour days, if that's what it... I'd do t four times 10 hour days, if that's what it took. Life is too short to only endure... Enjoy the two sevenths of it. Yeah. Oh well, you, know, you should enjoy your find a job you enjoy. I work eight days on, six days off, twelve and a half hours per day on a remote mine site. Still choose it over five days on, two days off. I'd love to work seven days on, seven days off in the city. Seven days off, but you could you do that in the city? You couldn't do it for an architectural project, a project that's running seven days on, seven days off. You need to rebrief. How can they do it in the mines? How, how can you do... I mean, you couldn't do that on a project-based job that the project is continuing. Maybe... Uh, uh, could you? I mean, if you had a whole... Not if you're running a job. I'm, I'm thinking of this as an architect, like we're documenting a project, we're going through a whole design. You couldn't do it for a week, then take a week off, then do it for a week, then take a week off. Maybe a draft you could, but that's kind of the thing we had when we had you know students working for us they'd be in for 3 days then take 4 days off then come in 3 days you'd be rebriefing them so much it would be so inefficient I, I don't i can't see how that could work for a lot of jobs you, correct me if i'm wrong guys if you're in the mines let me know how it works um well with wages stagnating for decade house prices uh, outpricing wage growth we're more likely to be moving to a 6 day work week in the future yeah probably right I've been doing it for the last seven years. It's been very beneficial for myself and my company, cabinet makers. There you go. So the cabinet makers can do it. Not at the same pay. Uh, should I already? I already do. However, includes working three out of four Saturdays, swings and roundabouts. Yeah, I only, only do th do three. So no way am I doing another one. So on my day off, everything is closed, and we earn less annually leave and sick leave. Hell, <laughs> well. You shouldn't need sick leave. Hang on, I'm getting messages here. Let me check while I'm recording. SVB is now the safest bank in the world. Okay, I'll have a look at have a look at what was sent to me there. I was hoping it was my concrete account and backed me with a quote. Um, I, I've got a quote for 25 MPA, um, 10 mil ag, uh, 280 a cube. Let me know if that's um, if that's good, guys. <laughs> All the concrete is there. Uh, effectively work 10 hours a day, so it'll be a nice change to get back that is owed. Three days is better. Being on three-day roster for over 10 years, it could never go back to five. Um, let's have a look here. One hour, including overtime and half our lunch breaks per week. Already work 10 hours a day, so wouldn't mind the extra OT rate for Friday. And that's, that's the reality of what we're going to see here. So guys, well, let's, let's have a bit of a talk about this one. So there we have it, everyone. The majority of viewers of the channel support a four-day week, but I suspect a lot of you are rigging the poll to make everyone less competitive than you so you can 
break in that sweet, sweet overtime working the five-day weeks, that will still exist. I think it's a bunch of green dreaming. I think it's it's just ludicrous, frankly. If businesses want to do it, let them do it. But civil servants, I mean, how many of them already get so much flex time they pretty much are working four days a week? That's the one thing they had. I remember people would come in, they'd read the paper, and that it all be counted as their work time. Anyway, let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one, guys. Were you honest in that poll, or were you stacking it to yes so you could work more hours and earn more money? As always, thanks for watching. Check out Heiser Bim and Heiser Does. And if you're a fan of the channel and enjoy the content I discuss and create here, you can support us on YouTube or Patreon, use our affiliate links, buy our pocket squares, or call us if you need an architect. Take care, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next episode of Heiser Says. Bye for now.